This segment is brought to you by Domain.com. Today I am following up on an episode of Hack Tip, Virtual Machines 101 with VirtualBox. Today we'll be mashing up two of my new favorite tools, multi-boot USB drives and virtual machines. Now a while back on Hack Tip, we played with VirtualBox and a Linux distro. I was able to get Ubuntu running on my Windows laptop with pretty much no problems. And a few weeks ago on Hack 5, I demonstrated how to build a multi-boot USB drive with Xboot. I love these multi-boot USB drives as they save you money and space on your keychain, allowing you to burn multiple ISOs and your favorite boot CDs like Offcrack, Clonezilla, Puppy Linux, all from one drive. Check out Hack 5 episode 920 for all that sort of info. Of course, when you're making these multi-boot USB drives, there are some trial and error in the process. And let's be honest, rebooting is a total drag. If only we could boot a virtual machine off a USB drive. Well, you can't. Not directly, anyhow. But what we can do is turn a USB drive into a file, a VMDK, which, as we learned last week, are virtual machine hard disks. Download and install VirtualBox version 4.0.6 if you haven't already, and hit the key combo, Windows key plus R, to bring up the run dialog. Now, I say 4.0.6 because if you download the newest version of VirtualBox, it's probably not going to work whenever you try to boot from a VMDK. Uh, they did something in the update of the recent version that just kind of messed it up. So just go back a couple of months on the website and download 4.0.6. Now, I'm going to go into Windows key R and go into Run Disk Management, which I already have pulled up here, and bring it up on this one. Um, so this is going to pull up your disk management tool. This tool is built into Windows and is generally used to do things like format, partition, and delete parts of your hard drive. But you can also see and mess around with your USB drives as well. So if you scroll down, you can find your USB stick. Mine is the drive that I recently made into a Yumi multi-bootable drive on an episode of Hack Tip. So I'm looking here. It looks like it's the one called Multi-Boot F, disk number two. Number two is actually very, very important in the future of this segment. So now you want to open the command prompt again by holding Windows key R and then typing in CMD and starting to run it as an admin and then hit enter. So I've got mine pulled up here and you're going to type in CD space program files with a backslash oracle backslash virtual box and hit enter. So this brings up the virtual box folder and then you're going to type in this really, really long piece, which I'm just gonna copy from the Pendrive Linux website because it's a lot easier. So I'm going to go to Pendrive Linux, which gives you an awful, awful nice version of the steps as well. And go right here where it's bold copy that over to my command prompt. Okay, so I put in vbox manage internal commands, uh, file name, user profile, which is snubs for myself, virtualbox usb.vmdk, physical disk drive is number two, which we figured out earlier from disk management, and I'm changing USB I'm just going to change it to usb2.vmdk because I already created one already. I don't want it to try to override it or give me an error because there's already one existing. And then I press enter. Created successfully. Okay, cool. Now that you've done the really hard part, you want to start up VirtualBox as an admin as well and create a new virtual machine. New. And click next. When prompted for a virtual hard disk, make sure that you check Use Existing Hard Disk and select the USB number 2.vmdk. And I'm going to call this USB 2.vmdk. And I'll give it a little bit more memory. Why not? Use Existing. Browse to USB2.vmdk, click Open, click Next, and hit Finish. Once you've finished creating your new virtual machine, you're ready to try it out. So hopefully mine's going to work. 
I've got VirtualBox open, and I'm about to try booting off my USB drive in the virtual machine. So I'm going to press start, and after waiting a few minutes, it should boot off my new VMDK. So let's see if it works. Press start. OK. Hi. It worked. I have booted off of my multi-boot VMDK or my multi-boot USB as a brand new made VMDK. This is awesome. It's a great way to get around having to restart your computer every time that you want to test out a USB bootable drive. Coming up soon, we'll be answering your viewer questions. But first, let's take a break and then check in with Darren for the nibble. If you want to build a video site or if your website's got a play button, I totally recommend getting yourself a .tv domain. You see, a .tv website lets you showcase your original content and create a unique site, not just another YouTube channel. Just go on over to domain.com and search for the perfect .tv domain for your new idea. Then use the coupon code HAK5 at checkout to save an extra 15%. And if you need hosting for your new .tv website, don't forget about Domain.com's web hosting plans. They start at less than six bucks a month and have everything you need to build, maintain, even promote your site. Remember, when you think domain names, think Domain.com. Got a great idea? It all starts with a great domain. Domain.com. <laughs> Semicolons aren't just for C++ compilers, you know? Or winky faces, I guess. Anyway, in Bash, they can be used to string together a set of commands. For example, say you wanted to start downloading an archive with wget, and then extract it when the download completes, you just do your wget, blah blah blah, and then semicolon, tar, xvz, blah blah blah, whatever it was you wanted to do, and then what would happen is as soon as one thing completes, the next thing would start. I mean, sometimes I know like a background process, like a render job is gonna take an hour and I wanna upload the resulting file afterwards. So what I'll do then is actually string together like this. I'll say sleep 3600 semicolon upload.sh file.mov or whatever it is, right? So in this case, the sleep command will actually wait the specified amount of seconds, which is 3600 or an hour! Anyway, want some free Hack5 swag? Submit your 4-bit tips over at hack5.org nibble.